हेलो एवरीवन सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस जे ई मेन्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर जैन थर्टी फर्स्ट शिफ्ट टू सो फर्स्ट विल सी हाउ मेनी क्वेश्चन कम फ्रॉम विच चैप्टर एंड देन विल डिस्कस द क्वेश्चन राइट सो फ्रॉम यूनिट्स एनालिसिस देर इज अ क्वेश्चन वन क्वेश्चन वेर वी हैव टू फाइंड द डायमेंशन एंड इन एरर एनालिसिस देर इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑन टाइम पीरियड इन न्यूटन्स लॉज देर आर टू क्वेश्चन वन इज फ्रॉम द एटवर्ड मशीन एंड वन क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम अ वेज ब्लॉक अरेंजमेंट and in work power energy there is a question on power and in rotation there are two questions one is from angular momentum of a point particle and the second question is from moment of inertia in gravitation there is a question on escape velocity in simple harmonic motion there is a question on spring block arrangement and we have to find the time period of that arrangement in wave uh, there is a question on speed of sound in a gas in cartesian thermodynamics there is a question on internal energy of a mixture of gas in current there are three questions two questions are from power and one question is from uh, these instruments that is meter bridge and electromagnetic induction there is a question on the induced current and em wave there is a question on the characteristic of the em wave and in alternating current there is a question on power and in ray optics there is a question on lens formula and in wave optics there is a question on brewster's law and in nuclei in nuclear there is a question on the size of the nucleus now let us discuss questions in this particular order now the first question is from units and dimension so here we have given e which is a physical quantity which is a minus x square upon bt where e is in energy x is the displacement and t is time find the dimension of ab okay so the dimension of energy is m raised per 1 l raised per 2 t raised per minus 2 and the dimension of displacement is nothing but l raised to power 1 and the dimension of time is nothing but t raised to power 1 so since a is, uh, since x square is subtracted from a so the dimension of a must be same as the dimension of x square so we can say the dimension of a is l square and the uh, and since a minus x square by bt is equated with e so we can say the dimension of left hand side will be same as the dimension of right hand side so the numerator is having dimension of l square so l square divided by b and t is having a dimension of time so this is m raised to power 1 l raised to power 2 t raised to power minus 2 now from here we can find the dimension of b so l raised to power 2 t raised to power minus 1 m raised to power minus 1 l raised to power minus 2 t raised to power 2 so that is the dimension of b So let us uh, club the like terms together. So L will get eliminated, and we have T m raised to power minus one is the dimension of B, and we have to find the dimension of A B. So A is having a dimension of L square, B is having a dimension of m raised to power minus one, T raised to power one. So m raised to power minus one, T raised to power one, L raised to power two. So option one is the right answer, right? Next uh, is the question from error an analysis. So we have given a pendulum which is having a length twenty centimeter and has an error of one millimeter. So L is given as twenty centimeter, and the error in length is one millimeter. So for fifty oscillation, it takes forty seconds, and it is measured with a stopwatch which is having a resolution of one second. So we can say for forty second measurement, the error is one second. So delta t will be one second, and we can say it in this case t. I can take it as forty seconds, right? So we know that the time period is two pi root l by g. So if I square this, we will get g as four pi square l by t square. So the error in g will be given as the sum of the error of so delta l by l plus 2 times delta t by t right so that we can write it like this so if i multiply this with 100 so percentage error in length will be what so l is 1 mm delta l is 1 mm l is 200 mm so multiply that with 100 plus 2 times 200 times delta t that is 1 divided by 40 so this comes out to be 5 and this comes out to be point uh, this comes out to be 0.5 okay right so i think there is some correction so this value is not 1 it is 2 right because it's a integer type question so this value is 2 so here we'll get 2 so this will become 1 so the answer is 6% right yeah next 
for the block shown f1 is the minimum force required to move the block up upward and f2 is the minimum force required to prevent it from slipping so you must have seen uh, this relation uh, the maximum force required to prevent slipping is mg sin theta plus mu mg cos theta and the minimum force required will be mg sin theta minus mu mg cos theta now we have to find the difference of these two forces so you can see mg sin theta will get eliminated so we'll be having 2 mu mg cos theta so 2 mu is given as 0.1 mg is 50 and cos 30 is 1 by uh, root 3 by 2 sorry so this will be 5 root 3 newton right so option b that should be the answer of this question now there is one more question from newton's laws that is um, on the atwood machine so we have in this case let me draw the diagram so we have given a pulley and there are two blocks which are connected with a string let us say this is m1 and this is m2 and the acceleration is g by 8 and we have to find m1 by m2 so in this case <clears throat> we know that acceleration will be m1 minus m2 upon m1 plus m2 times g right so 1 by 8 so this will be m1 minus m2 upon m m1 plus m2 now from here even we can use component or dividend or we can directly find it like this so m2 plus m1 is equals to 8 times m1 minus 8 times m2 so 9 m2 will be 7 m1 so m1 by m2 will be 9 by 7 so that should be the answer of this question now let us see the next question it is from work power energy and it is from here we have to find the power so we have given force uh, moving in a straight line the particle is moving in a straight line and force which is being applied is is a function of time 60 square i cap minus 3t j cap and velocity is 3t square uh, 3t square i cap plus 60 j cap and we need to find the power at t equals to 2 second so we know what is the power what is the instantaneous power it is f dot v so let us take the dot product so it will be 6t square times 3t square minus 3t times 60 so this will be 18 t raised to power 4 minus 18 t square so 18 t square will come out so we have t square minus 1 now we can substitute t as 2 so this will be 18 times 4 times 4 minus 1 times 3 so 18 times 12 will be 216 so option 1 is the right answer next question is from gravitation and it is about like here we have to find no it is not gravitation it is rotation where we have to find the angular momentum a body of mass m is projected with a speed u at an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal the angular momentum of the body about the point of projection when the body is at the highest point is root to m u cube by x g find the value of x this question uh, it was there also there in in the earlier attempts but in that case the angle was different so i think in the last uh, in yesterday's second shift uh, the angle was 30 degree here it is given as 45 degrees so it is you can say a direct repetition of that question so in this let us let me draw the diagram so we have thrown an object body of mass m with the initial velocity u at an angle of 45 degree and at the highest point we know the velocity is u cos theta which is u by root 2 and we need to find the angular momentum about the point of projection so if i show the line of motion of the particle at the highest position this is the line of motion and its perpendicular distance from the point of projection is nothing but the maximum height of the projectile from the ground so the angular momentum will be h max times mu by root 2 right r cross p is the formula now so h max is u square sine square theta by 2g times mu by root 2 so let us substitute the values so uh, u sine square 45 is 1 by 2 and this becomes cube we have mu cube by 1 by 2 divided by 2 g root 2 so this will become 4 root 2 so answer will be 4 in this case right so x will be 4 so there is one more question from rotation and it is, it is from moment of inertia so we are given two solid sphere each of mass 2 kg and radius 75 centimeter 
are arranged as shown find the moment of inertia of the system about the given axis so for a solid sphere if there is an axis passing through the center of mass it is 2 by 5 mr square now we can apply parallaxis theorem and we can find the moment of inertia of this sphere about an axis which is tangent to the sphere and this so we can say the contribution of one sphere about this particular axis will be 2 by 5 mr square plus mr square since we have two spheres and they are uh, they are symmetrically aligned with uh, with respect to the axis so it will be two times of this so that should be the answer so uh, let me simplify that 7 by 5 so it will be 14 by 5 m is to r square so we have 3 by 4 square so this will be 14 times 2 times 9 divided by 5 into 16 so we can say this will be 8 so this will be 4 and this will be 7 so 63 by 20 so it will be 3.15 kilogram meter square so that should be the answer so option one is the right answer right now this question is from gravitation so we have given mass of the moon is 1 by 81 times the mass of the planet so mass of moon is 1 by 81 times the mass of the planet so there is a planet and it has its moon and the mass of that moon is 1 by 81 times the planet mass and the radius of the moon is 1 by 9 times the radius of the planet the ratio of the escape speed of the uh, from the planet to escape uh, speed from the moon so we know that the escape speed is given by root of 2 g m by r where m is the mass of the the planet or the moon right and r is the radius of the planet or the moon so escape velocity for planet will be root of 2 g m p by r p and escape velocity for the moon will be root of 2 g m m by r m so let us write uh, the value of uh, mass and radius of the moon in terms of the uh, the mass of planet and the radius of the planet so that will be root of 2 g m p by 81 and then r p by 9 so this can be written as v p root of 9 by 81 so this will be <clears throat> 9 so it will be v p by 3 so planet to a uh, planet v p by v m will be 3 so 3 should be the answer of this question okay next is from uh, simple harmonic motion we have given this arrangement and we have to find the time period of oscillation and is given by this expression and we have to find the value of alpha now first we have to find the equivalent spring constant so these two springs are in parallel so when the springs are in parallel their spring constant will add up so this will become 2k now 2k and k are in series so in that case uh, it becomes 1 by 2k plus 1 by k should be the k equivalent of, uh, of this arrangement so 1 by k equivalent so this will be 2k by 3 right so this the right arm has a spring constant 2k by 3 and it is in parallel with k so if they are in parallel so the uh, the equivalent spring constant will be 2k by 3 plus k so it will be 5k by 3 so the time period will be 2 pi root m by k equivalent so 5k by 3 and since uh, here we do not have 2 so they have taken 2 in, inside the uh, the square root so this will become 4 3 is a 12 so 12 m by 5k root times 5 so answer will be 12 right so next question uh, is from waves where we have to find the speed of the sound and we know uh, what is the formula of uh, speed of sound in gas it will be root of gamma rt by m naught now gamma is given as 1.4 and r is given as 8.3 and temperature at stp is 273 and molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams so we have to convert that into kilograms so 32 into 10 raised per minus 3 now we have to simplify this so i'm just calculating this using a calculator so 1.4 into 8.3 times 273 times 1000 divided by 32 and root of the answer so it comes out to be 
314.8 so if it is integer type so it is 315 meter per second so that should be the answer of this question now the next question is from KDGN thermodynamics where we have to find the internal energy of the gas so we have eight moles of oxygen four moles of nitrogen both are diatomic gases at the same temperature are mixed the total internal energy is so total internal energy will be internal energy of uh, some of the internal energy of both the gases and the internal energy formula is f by 2 nr uh, nrt so both have the same uh, degree of freedom so n1 plus n2 times rt so f is 5 for diatomic gas so i'm assuming rigid diatomic gases n1 and plus n2 is 12 <coughs> r times t so this is 6 so it comes out to be 30 rt so option c is the right answer next question is from current electricity and here we have to find the power delivered by the battery so here so we have given this arrangement so first we have to find the equivalent resistance of this network so if i show you uh, so can you see these two resistors these two resistors are in series because we can open this node because of symmetry if there is a current in this there is a uh, this is the axis of symmetry so if there is some current in this that current will move to this resistor so we can say these two resistors are in series these two resistors are in series so if i simplify this so we'll be having two ohms then we have four ohms then we have four ohms then we have two ohms these are in parallel and there is a battery which is having internal resistance 2 by 3 this is 2 volt so we uh, so this can uh, so 4 and 4 are in parallel so it becomes 2 right 4 and 4 becomes 2 and this uh, 2 and there are 3 2s which are in parallel so it becomes 2 by 3 so 2 by 3 will be equivalent of this in, uh, parallel connections so 2 by 3 ohms so this 2 by 3 is in series with 2 by 3 so uh, r equivalent will be 4 by 3 ohms now we have to find the power and we have given the voltage so it will be v square by r equivalent so it will be 4 divided by 4 by 3 so answer will be 3 watt right now this question is uh, again from current electricity and it is um, from a meter bridge a resistor of 25 ohms is in left side uh, with a resistor x on the right side the resistance per length per unit length is r so we, basically what we have given there is a resistor of 25 ohms and there is a resistor x and here we have <clears throat> a meter wire which is having a resistance r per unit length and now we have changed the resistance of this wire to 2r per unit length find the change in the mean position where the earlier mean position was 40 so suppose uh, if there is a galvanometer this length is 40 right <clears throat> so in this case uh, what would be the change so there will be no change why there will be no change <clears throat> because uh, the resistance will depends upon the length right it will be directly proportional to the length and we here we have to find the ratio because 25 by x will be equals to suppose if this is l1 and this is 100 minus l1 so l1 by 100 minus l1 got it <clears throat> so the resistance per unit length will get cancelled out because resistance of length l1 will be resistance per unit length times the length l1 so in both the cases even if you change the resistance of the wire this r value will get cancelled out so we'll get the same ratio if ratio is same thus the balance point will not change it will remain as 40 right okay if they want to if they ask you the shift in the balance point it will be zero if they ask you what is the position of the balance point from the left hand, it will be 40 centimeter right so the next question is again from current electricity can you see there are three questions from current electricity in this particular shift if current through an incandescent lamp decreases by 20 percent how much change will be there in its illumination so illumination is nothing but the the rate at which the energy is being radiated more the rate of energy is being radiated we can say it more will be the illumination so basically here we have to find the power 
so if current through the the, the lamp decreases by 20% so we are decreasing i it becomes 0.8 i right so if initial power was p which is i square r so we are assuming that the resistance of the bulb is not changing with the with the current right usually what happens in reality when we increase the resist when we increase the current there will be more heat dissipation and the resistance may alter but here i'm assuming that there will be no change in the resistance so early it was i r uh, i square r then it will become 0.8 i square r which is 0.64 i square r so can you see there is a factor of 0.64 so we can say the power has decreased by how much 36 percent can you see so 36 percent is the answer next question is from electromagnetic induction the magnetic flux through a loop varies with time as this so this is the flux as a function of time is given to us if the resistance of the loop is 8 ohms find the current through it at t equals to 2 seconds so first what we can do we can find the emf induced so emf induced will be its magnitude will be d5 by dt so that will be 10 t minus 3 and if i substitute t as 2 this will become 17 volts right so what is the current in the loop that will be induced emf divided by the resistance so 17 by 8 ampere so option c is the right answer now let us see the next question it is from electromagnetic waves and it is th theory based question statement one in electromagnetic waves energy is distributed equally between electric and magnetic field if you remember energy density is half epsilon naught e naught square and basically it is by both the electric field and the magnetic field and the contribution by electric field and magnetic field is equal so 1 by 4 epsilon naught e naught square will be by the electric field and 1 by 4 mu naught b naught square will be by the magnetic field and these two values are equal so statement one is correct statement two when electromagnetic wave strikes on an object it exerts pressure yes it is because an em wave it will it suffers some momentum change and if it suffers a momentum change it will transfer momentum and it will exert pressure on the surface or object on which it falls so statement two is also correct so both the statements are correct right so next question is from alternating current and here we have to find the power find average power in a electric circuit if source voltage is 20 sin 100 t and the current is 2 sin 100 t plus pi by 3 so can you see we have given rms value of the voltage which is 20 by root 2 and we have given rms value of the current which is 2 by root 2 and we have given phase difference between voltage and the current that is pi by 3 and we know that the average power is given by v rms dot i rms so this will be v rms i rms times cos phi so v rms is 20 by root 2 i rms is 2 by root 2 and cos 60 is 1 by 2 so it will be 10 watt right so option a is the right answer next question is from ray optics radius of curvature of equiconvex lens is 20 so this is r material of the lens is having reflective index 1.5 so first let us find the focal length of this lens right find image distance from the lens if an object is placed 10 centimeter away from the lens so let's apply lens makers formula so 1 by f will be 1.5 minus 1 so it will be 2 by r because it is equi uh, equiconvex lens so this will be 0.5 so it is nothing but 1 by r so focal length is nothing but 20 centimeter now uh, we have placed an object at a distance 10 centimeter from the lens and focal length is 20 centimeter so u is minus 10 centimeter focal length is positive because it's a converging lens and we have to find the image distance of so 1 by v minus 1 by u is equals to 1 by 20 so 1 by v is equals to 1 by 20 minus 1 by 10 so 20 is the lcm so 1 minus 2 so minus 1 by 20 so 20 is the answer so option a is the right answer next question is from wave optics and it is from brewster's law unpolarized light incident on a transparent glass at instant angle of 60 degree if the reflected ray is completely polarized then the angle of refraction is so 
according to Brewster's law, if we incident unpolarized light on an interface, so here we have glass, say here we have reflective index mu, here we have one, and the reflected ray is plane polarized. So when this happens, the refracted uh, ray is partially polarized and it makes an angle of 90 degree with the reflected ray. So if that is the case, if this angle is 60 degrees, so the angle of reflection is also 60 degrees, so this will be 30 degree. So 30 is the answer. Find the mass number of an atom whose radius of nucleus is half. So radius is half of the that of a given atom of mass number 196, 192. So we know that radius of the nucleus is given as R0 times A raised to the power 1 by 3 where A is the mass number. So here we can say R2 by R1 will be equals to A2 by A1, uh, cube of R2 by R1 will be A2 by A1 and we have given R2 by R1 as 1 by 2 and A2 we have to calculate and A1 is given as 192. So this will be 192 divided by 8 so which is 2, 4, 24 so A2 will be 24 so 24 is the answer of this question. Right, so again you have seen like in this shift um, I would rate all the questions as easy. So this is the pattern and we have seen similar uh, difficulty level in whatever shift that we have discussed. So all the best for your exam.